It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto his name, O Most High. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure and a privilege again to join in this fashion for Bible study. And so we look forward to another great evening. We're just going to share one song as we wait for others to join. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Such a powerful song. I don't mind waiting. And as we go through our study tonight, we will see that there are some persons that don't want to wait. But may the Lord help us all to wait on him, because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk 
and not faint. Let me welcome you tonight um, for joining us and we're looking forward to God for a great night. So at this time, let us just pause for prayer. Father, we are thankful for your goodness. We're thankful for your love, for your grace. Lord, as we come, Lord, we pray that your study, study will teach us to wait on you will temper us, O oh God, and restrain us so that we will wait on you to lead and to direct and to give us that which you have in store for us. Bless us tonight, O oh God, and open up your truths to us. May the study be easy, Lord, and for all who will share in this broadcast, for those who will assist as facilitators and readers, Lord, I pray that your blessings will be upon us all as we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. So greetings to everyone. Already I see Minister Young. Uh, Minister Adams online, Sister Juliet. Yes, Minister Young is online as well. And Sister Alma Clark, I want to welcome you all. And I trust that you'll share the link and stay the course with us and be blessed. In the background, I also have Reverend French who will bring us greetings momentarily. And, and also Sister Rochelle who will be reading the scriptures for us tonight. So at this time, welcome to one, welcome to all. For anyone who is online and I have not called your name, we are grateful that you are on. So please just enjoy the presence of the Lord and know that we are all in this thing together to be strengthened and empowered by the Lord. It's my pleasure to present to you the Reverend Eugenie French, who is my co-host in this broadcast tonight. God bless you all. Greetings. Thank you, Bishop. Greetings to one and all and to my model family. I am happy that you have joined tonight. So welcome. And to all the other viewers who are viewing now and who will view later, I greet you in Jesus' name. And I really like what the song is saying to us tonight. I don't mind waiting on the Lord. You know, a uh, lot of persons don't like to wait, but when we wait on the Lord, we will not be disappointed. So even as I greet you tonight, I encourage you to wait on the Lord, whatever you are facing. If you are waiting on the Lord, you will not be disappointed. God bless you and welcome to another study in the book of Joshua. I hope that you will gain tonight and that well you cannot lose when you get into the presence of the lord so stay tuned enjoy share by you know just you know making your notations in the chat and the lord bless you thank you so much reverend french and i want to say to all jamaicans pre-independence day to you and i trust that tomorrow be a great one for you and as we celebrate as a nation there's much to be excited about. Even though there's much to um, be of concern, we want to celebrate the good things. We're celebrating our, our athletes in, in Tokyo. They are really making us proud. And there's so much happening, even with the, with the, with the, with the um, you know, vaccination. There are more persons showing interest in being vaccinated, and we want to celebrate that. There are others who still hold on to the false theories and the negativity. But my point is, our God is in control and there are so many other persons who have taken and they are still alive and well. And, uh, you know, when we look at it, if we refuse to take it, it will get to the stage of being mandatory. And at that time, we'll have no choice. So let us do it when we are free to do it. Nobody has to push us and we don't have to feel like, um, you know, we did it under duress. So pray about it, prepare yourself and go ahead and do your thing. And you don't have to make it public if you don't want to. It's your own choice. And the Lord will richly be your protector because that's what he promises to be our protection. So even when the enemy would rise up with strategies to bring us out, the Lord will lift us up and he will turn what the enemy meant for bad into our good. So I want to say, go ahead and do what you have to do. So there's much to celebrate in this season as a nation. And we want to forget about the negativity. Let us think about the positive things about our country and our people, our achievement, and just celebrate and give God thanks for that because there are so many other nations who would have wished to have even one of our athletes to put their name on the list. But <laughs> we have so much, you know, and we are still counting and expecting more. So we want to give God thanks for that. We are on to the book of Joshua. 
chapter 13. And, uh, you know, it's a powerful study. What we realize is that over the last week or two weeks or so, what we've seen is a lot of places, names, and so on. And, you know, it, it's difficult for us to get tongue twisted sometimes to call the names. But the whole point is not so much the names that we must be focusing on. We need to focus on the message behind it. So last week, as we look at chapter 12, the entire chapter really depicts God's faithfulness. And tonight, we're going to look and see what else the Lord has to say to us. And indeed, one of them is that we need to learn to wait on him because he will bless us and he will give us the inheritance that is due to us if we will but wait on him. So I'm going to invite Sister Rochelle at this time to do the reading for us of verses 1 through 7, which deals about the lands that were still to be conquered. And we will get more into that. Joshua 13, verses 1 to 7. Now Joshua was old and stricken in years, and the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and old and stricken in years, and there remaineth yet not, there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. This is the land that yet remaineth all the borders of the Philistines and all Jeshur. From Seor, which is before Egypt, even from the borders of Ephraim, northward, which is counted to the Canaanite, five lords of the Philistines, the Gazathites, and Ashkenites, and the Eshkalonites, the Gittites, and the Ekranites, also the Avites. From the south, all the land of the Canaanites, and Mira. That is beside the Sidon, Sidonians upon Aphek to the borders of the Aphrodites. And the land of the Jib, Jiblites and all Lebanon toward the sun rising from Beelagad under Mount Hermon unto the entering into Haman and the inhabitants of the hill country from Lebanon unto misrefund name and all the sidonians them will i drive out from before the children of israel only divide thou it by lot unto the israelites for an inheritance as i have commanded thee. now therefore divide this land for the for an inheritance unto the nine tribes the half tribe of manasseh Thanks be Thank to you. God. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Rochelle. I want to preface this section by saying that chapters 13 through 24 deals with the dividing of the promised land. And after seven years of battle, Israel gained control of the land, which was then divided and allotted to the tribes. Joshua dismisses the army, for it was no each tribe's responsibility to clear out the remaining enemies from their own area. And Joshua continued to encourage the people to remain faithful to God so they can remain in the land. The promised land was Israel's earthly inheritance, but Israel also had a spiritual inheritance in which we can share when we live a life of faithfulness to God. So verses 1 through 7 deals with the lands um, still to be conquered. And the key thing we see in this section is that Joshua was getting old. He was between 85 to 100 years old of age at the time. And God, however, still had work for him to do. This fulfills his, God's promises to us, to Joshua and to us tonight, that we see in Psalm 92 verse 14, that the righteous shall still bear fruit in old age. They will be fat and flourishing. And those that remain planted in the Lord, they, they, they will actually grow more spiritually, grow in faith, grow in, their, in the vigor, their spiritual vigor, grow in the understanding of things, of the things of God, grow in understanding God's God working in and through them so as a people let us not be too concerned about our age 
because God is able to use the young man who is strong and he's also able to use the elderly because even in old age, they are able to bear fruit, much fruit. What an awesome God we serve. We are in a culture uh, that of, um, often glorify young and the strong and set aside those who are older. Yet the older per people, they are filled with wisdom that comes with experience. And so there has to be a blend between the young and the, and the old so that we get things right. And, you know, the young are more creative and coming up with new ideas. But then we need to look at wisdom because experience teaches wisdom. The, 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 the elderly, they are, more, they are very capable of serving if given the chance and should be encouraged to do so. Believers are never allowed to retire from God's service. So that's an important thing for us to know. Um, so in our church, we do have a lot of elderly persons. We want to encourage you to continue to make yourself useful in the house of the Lord. Even to whisper to someone and to introduce them to Jesus, you still have a place to do that. Praise the Lord. And sometimes out of your own experience, you can challenge somebody much more than somebody who has not yet experienced enough of God. So continue to make yourself useful to the house of the Lord. Those past retirement age should not assume that age disqualifies or excuse them from serving God or being used by God. Here, Joshua and Israel transition from military activity to allotment of land. So their role has changed. They're no longer getting involved in, in fighting and, and, and being a, 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 a military band. They were now looking at how to share this inheritance that God has given to them. In verses 2 to, um, to 3, regions not yet occupied included areas on the fringe of the promised land. And the five towns of the Philistines appear here for the first time. The Shion has been described as the brook of Egypt in chapter 15, verse 4. The word lords is a term only applied to Philistines. And the Avites appear as a people living south of the regions of the Philistines, seen in Deuteronomy 2, verse 23. Now, there is two significant groups that were there. The Geshuri, um, which include those inhabiting, inhabiting the region north and east of the Sea of Galilee. And in verse 4, we see Me uh, Meira. Um, it is not otherwise known, but it is the region of the Sidonins, including coastal areas of the northern end of the region occupied by the 12 tribes. So Afek appear earlier in chapter 12, verse 18, and it lays on the coast, the coastal plains between Joppa and Dor, where the plain narrowed and the hill country, the borders of the Amorites, reach closest to the Mediterranean Sea. In verse 5, the land of the Giblites was was um, Bilos as important coastal city near, uh, near um, city north of Sion. The entering into Amoth, sometimes called Lebo Hamath, is the most northern place described. So all of these are important places that we are seeing being mentioned. But in verse 7, we realize that the command to divide the land is repeated emphasizing its importance. The nine tribes and the half tribe of Manasseh included, um, excluded Reuben, God, and the other half of Manasseh, who received an allotment east of the Jordan River. So when we look at all of this, it's an uh, important thing to understand the background to, you know, these lands. And really, it, it, it is... It is um, this section ties to Moses and, you know, how the people ask for the land to settle on, which that is the Ma'af Manasseh, Reuben, and God. And we have heard about that in earlier chapters of Joshua. So the story continues. And I'm going to open up to Rev to give her comments at this time. 
Thank you, Bishop Williams. You're doing well with the names, man. <laughs> God helping us. <laughs> but I believe that God would want us to, you know, oh, God is so thorough. Yes. He, he, he presented um, the every area of the land for, for God. This was very, very important and instructive. Um, not a, one of those entertaining chapters, but yet God really wants us to have a, a, a bird's eye view of the entire region, that land that is very, very important and special to God. So yes. the first thing that I really want to note is how God is keeping his promise. You know, he's faithful, as you said earlier bishop is faithful and also another attribute is that god is god keeps his promise the promises that he makes and so he would have said that the land that he promised to abraham the the agreement that they made that later on it would be passed down to jacob and his grandson and we see that the land is divided up among the tribe are the sons of jacob so that's one thing that god is faithful in keeping every promise that he has made and in in chapter in verse one of chapter 13 as we look at it we see that the the the, the scripture says that now joshua was old and and well stricken in age and you would have given his age his, his age um um the, the frame you know that yeah. duration of his yes of his life and um i realized that god was concerned that here joshua was getting older and he was getting weaker when we are getting older and the land was yet to be conquered and so god was concerned about that and we see that god went on the, the scriptures went on to tell us all those areas the general areas that needed to be conquered and in verse 7 is in verse 6 he said that um he would do the driving out of the land so yeah. um if, if joshua um perhaps would not be able to physically you know um do the fi physical fighting as he was accustomed but here God was being faithful when he said, I will drive them out. Yes, you know, as he did before, he was going to be doing the fighting on behalf of the children of Israel because he was going to keep his promise to do what he has a promise. And what God starts, he finishes. And so he was not going to leave them in the cold. But I also realized, too, from verse 1, that God knows our allotted time. Well, we know that already, that God knows all things. And he would know um, how much time he would be giving to us and when our work would end. But we are seeing it right here in, in chapter 1, in chapter 13, verse 1, that God was saying, Joshua, your time is drawing near when you will have to leave this, this earth to join your fathers you know didn't say that in much word but he said you're really getting old older and as you are getting older you are getting weaker and they are yet unconquered lands uh, and and so i you know we we need to be mindful that we, we, when god gives us a task we are to make sure that we are doing what god says with all of what we have when we are strong enough when we are when we when we are when we are mentally you know strong too not just physical but mentally strong to take on what god has given to us so that we accomplish what god wants us to accomplish within the time frame and so that we may please god so um we we real we see that our, our time should not be wasted you know the stewardship of our time should be taken seriously and we should work and we really see that joshua was a very faithful servant and here god was coming to him to say joshua 
you are getting old now you know you have done a lot and there are still yet unconquered lands but i know that those the philistine areas were the ones left to be conquered and god was saying i am going to drive them out at whatever cost and the last thing that i see here is that inheritance is important you know um person should leave something for their children or their relatives and it should be it should be given in a way that the person who is receiving it actually receives it and gets it. We see it in this chapter that as they went on, God, um, God was careful to allot out, parcel out the land, and everybody knows that this portion belongs to this tribe, and so on and so forth. A lot of times. You know, even in Christendom, we think that inheritance is not important or we should not leave anything for our children or anybody else. But we see that we should ensure that we are leaving an inheritance, leaving a gift for somebody. And we must ensure that the way we do it, that person gets it. God is interested in that. And for parents and even husbands and wife you know fathers husbands must ensure that when they leave that they do they are not leaving their wives or their children to scrunch around trying to find you know liberty they should ensure that there is an inheritance something that they can have as a foundation to to survive on god bless you amen amen powerful lesson rev and the whole business of putting it into everyday language you know you, you get your will and you yes. open your insurance and you do your savings and all these things because this is how we're going to honor that that you are now suggesting as the scripture gives that impression i want to welcome sister carling sutherland who is online all the way overseas brother Howard wright minister claudette adams bless the lord for you all sister lorna mckenzie thanks so much for joining share the link stay the course with us and be blessed we're at verse 8 through 14 and i'm going to invite sister rochelle to read for us again verses 8 through 14. with whom the rubenites and the gadites have received their inheritance which moses gave them beyond jordan eastward even as Moses, the servant of God, gave him from Aror, that is upon the bank of the river Arnon, and the city that is in the midst of the river, and all the plains of Medeba unto Deban, and all the cities of Sion, king of the Ammonites, which resigned in Heshbon, unto the border of the children of Ammon, and Gilead, and the border of the Jeshurite and Mahakathite and all Mount Hermon and all Bashan unto Salma, all the kingdom of um, in Bashan which, which reigned in Ashkaram and in Kedrin, who remained of the remnant of the giants, for it is Moses, Moses might and cast them out nevertheless the children of israel expelled not the jeshurite nor the ma 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 the ma 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 God of Israel, made by fire, are there in order? I said after them. This word of the Lord. Thanks be to God again. Amen. Thank you, Sister Rochelle. So verses 18 through 13 deals with the land divided east of Jordan. The territory described here in verse 9 through 33 is identical to the combined areas controlled by Sion and Og, in, as described in chapter 12, verse 1 through 5. Here we will deal with two and a half tribes, those beyond Jordan, not within the land. Reuben, 
Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh. They received their inheritance beyond Jordan. They said to Moses, we like it here. God uh, and God essentially made a deal with them and now they will inherit it. The west side of the Jordan and these two and a half tribes are covered clearly in verse 13. One reason the Israelites encountered so many problems as they settled the land was that they failed to conquer fully the land and to drive out all the inhabitants. The cancer-like presence of the remaining pagan people, peoples of Canaan, caused unending difficulties for Israelites as recorded in the book of Judges. Thus, I'm sorry, just as they failed to remove completely the sin from the land, believers today often fail to remove completely the sin from their lives with equally, equally disastrous results. So here, two tribes remain with the Israelites to this day, which means as at the time that the book was written, the Gershu and the Maka, they, um, though they seem small and insignificant, they became a problem. Similarly, what God deemed to be sin, we will sometimes look at it as insignificant, and then we face the consequence for indulging in it. Second Samuel 3, verse 3, we see where David married the daughter of Gashu, king of um, the Gashu king, and fathered Absalom. Then in 2 Samuel 10, verse 6, David experienced the effect of these generations. He had to deal with them, um, the Maka generation. And then in, 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 verse thir in chapter 13, verse 37, Absalom rebelled against his family and, and actually went to Gershu, and Gershu became a barrier between him and his family. So our disobedience can carry cross-generation repercussion. And so we must ensure that we follow the will of God, follow what God has said to us. What, what, what our generations do, what our generations tolerate can become the threat to the next generation. So we find that um, some of the things generation of old used to do, we no longer embrace them. And our generation, the generation that will come after us, they will feel the effects of some of this. Because some things that worked in the past, we totally ignore them at this time. And so we will deny future generation from, you know, the results of rewards that comes with doing certain things. And the negative part of it, the same. So we need to ensure that we, you know, live a life that is pleasing to God so that the next generation can be blessed rather than suffer curse. Praise God. Our, our obedience can cause blessings to the next generation, while our disobedience can cause curse to the next generation. The key issue, the enemy remains. The enemy remains in their camp to oppose God's people and to prevent them from occupying the land and really enjoying the inheritance that God has in store for them. So it gives a picture of us today. We have enemies visible and invisible. And Satan targets our minds, our body, our will, our conscience, and, uh, and even cause pride to get the better of us. What we allow will stay with us. Just like these enemies, they will stay with us if we allow it. And they will pass on to the next generation. So we have a responsibility to be very careful. Now for verse 14, this deals with the allotment of the tribe of Levi. And it also come back in verse 33 in greater depth. In accordance with Deuteronomy 18 verse 1, the, the tribes of Levi received no inheritance of land. The God of, the God of Israel are their inheritance. What an opportunity they have. Um, this inheritance was very important, um, important and God was more important to them than the lands. In Leviticus, they were made, they, they made the burnt offering, the peace offering, 
the grain offering, sin offering, trespass offering, all these offerings to the Lord. And these offerings would be a constant source for the Levi for their survival. They were excluded from the 13 tribes. Only 12 tribes got allotment of the land. Bless the Lord. So we want to turn over to you now, Rev. A lot to comment on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. So we see that in the distribution of the land, God would have ordered Joshua to be the supervisor over the allotment, what each person is supposed to get. You know that even in our day to day, um, if, even in our time, we know that when there is a, a sharing of property or inheritance, you know, as you mentioned before, Bishop the Will, there is somebody who executes it. And yes. God would have ordered Joshua to be that objective person to make sure that each person was, or each tribe was getting their due share according as God would have commanded it. What yes. is in the mind of God? God would have Joshua as the leader to ensure that it goes according to his plan. And so we can take um, so we can take so much from this, even in our everyday life, but also in the spiritual, that as leaders, we have a big responsibility in ensuring that God's idea or God's plan is carried out. And we see that God would, the Joshua would be so guided because he, they did that by lot, you know, L-O-T lot in those times they would cast lots you know they would pray and they would um ensure they would go and ask the lord we see that in acts in acts chapter about chapter one where the disciples when they wanted to find out who should replace judas they cast lots in those times they, you know they didn't have the holy spirit so they had to do that to, to bring the matter before God. And that is what Joshua did. So we, we in, in that way, they were depending on God to make sure that everybody was getting the piece of the, a piece of the land that they were so named to. And that is so important because what that does is that they are not the, the children of Israel would not be getting anything by force or favoritism, but they would be getting it um, by the law of equity, and they would be getting it uh, um, in a, in, the, in a right way, you know, according as they were named on it. So we 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 have to be so careful in how we do distribution, in how we even. Um, treat persons who are within our sphere you know in our homes you know those persons who are close to us god is god sees these things as very important because after all god is a god of he's holy and he is just and he's righteous and whatever is going to we are going to do we should ensure that god is first of all a part of it and that we are doing it according as he determines and we also see that yes levi um they were aaron is from this tribe and they um the levi tribe did not get um any land for themselves even though they were allowed to live in you know cities here and there but their service was really unto god can you imagine that of all the tribes God would select one of them to just serve him, to just offer up their lives to him, you know. And um, that is why it was so important that Joshua didn't miss. Suppose he had allotted the, this, this task to Judah or some other tribe. You no, know, that would be a problem. But, uh, but we see that God really wanted the tribe of Levi to be the priestly tribe and to 
to to uh, offer their service to him only to live before him and to do that and we see zechariah coming from this tribe so you know, we, we we see that god is intentional about everything that he does and sometimes i don't think we get it even me you know even in studying this book i realize that sometimes we just run rush and hurry to do things and to satisfy our own ego but god is interested in our youth in our old age he knows when we are getting weaker and so he wants to keep us abreast of it but we will not um know what is, what god wants to do or what his next move is if we are not staying in his presence so we can know so there are some things that we must really be careful about and the way to be careful about that is to always remaining in god's presence and to ask him you now the old in the old testament they cast lots that's what they know but today we know how to go to the holy to go to god and pray in the spirit so that he can reveal himself to us because that's how we are going to know god is not afraid to reveal himself everything that we know is, is going to come through revelation so yes that is my um little talk on this part well said rev and I, I really like the part about us you know assessing ourselves as leaders you know to and even in our homes as parents to be fair you know we distribute you know we share you know and sometimes you know it's people have to even talk to us for us to see ourselves you know so yeah. we'll be ill-treating our child and somebody whisper to us say see that one that one is going to come up and mind you you know <laughs> and so it's when you look into it you as the parent now take stock and and see that you're really treating this child in a way that others are looking on and so you begin to you know with restrain yourself somewhat so we sometimes you have to help others in that way to guide them to make sure that they are listening to god and staying in keeping with god's will because god's will must be done and god um yes. it's it's very important that god's will is fulfilled in our lives and so we must play our parts as leaders to see that the will of god is fulfilled in our fellow brothers and sisters lives so it's a powerful message there for us um i'm gonna move on now to verses 15 through 23 and again sister rochelle will be reading for us verses 15 through 23. and moses gave unto the tribe of the children of reuben inheritance according to their family and their coast was from Aror, Aror, uh, that is on the bank of the river Arnon, the city that is in the midst of the river, river and all the plains by Medeba, Heshbon, and all her cities that are in the plain, Ebon, and Bamoth, and Beth, Baalmeon, and Jahaza, and Ted. Dima and Mecca and Kirjathame and Sibma and Zarephshar in the Mount of the Valley and Beth Peor and Ashdoth Pisgah and Beth Jehimot and all the cities of the plain and all the kingdom of Siam, king of the Amorites, which reigned in Heshbon whom Moses smote with the princes of Midian, Evi and Ritten, and Sor, and Hor, and Reba, which were dukes of Sion dwelling in the country. Balaam also the son of Bera, the soothsayer, hid the children of Israel slain with the sword among them that were slain by them. And the border of the children of Reuben was Jordan, and the border thereof. This was the inheritance of the children of Reuben, after their families, the cities, and the villages thereof. This word of word, thanks be to God. Yes, thank you, Sister Rochelle. Want to welcome others who have joined us online: Anna K. Brown, Simone Roberts, and um, Sister Hyacinth Walters. So glad that you are on. Be blessed tonight. Amen.
So we are dealing with verses 15 through 23, where the land was given to the tribe of Reuben. There is often an, an interesting connection between the land of a tribe, the land that a tribe received, and the character of the tribe's um, founder. For example, because of Joseph, Joseph's godly character. In Genesis 49, verse 22 to 26, the tribe descended from him were Ephraim and Manasseh. And they were given the richest, most fertile land in all of Canaan. Judah, who offered himself in exchange of his brother Benjamin's safety in Genesis 44, verse 18 through 34, he re they received the largest portion of the land, which eventually beca became the southern kingdom of the seat of David's dynasty. Reuben, who, who slept with one of his father's wife in Genesis 49, verse 4, was given desert land, the region described here in the scriptures. So in Numbers 34, verse 1, they saw the land as um, the, the, one of these tribes. Remember Reuben, um, God, and Manasseh. They saw the land as fertile, and they request to occupy this land. And we realized that Moses was very angry about it, and he called them disloyal and selfish. Yet they press and they ensure that they got the land. Numbers 32, verse 6 through 15. And they had to actually form a compromise. Moses had to form a compromise with them. Praise God. And the compromise was for them to be part of the army that would have helped to fight for the other tribes to reach the promised land. So they would be considered as the people, the Reubenites, they are the people who lived on the other side. This was not the promised land. They lived on the other side and they were always seen as fallen short of being in the promised land. They would be under constant attack, constant pressure, constant difficulties. And like us, if we, dis if we decide that we want to live on the other side rather than on God's side, we're going to find ourselves with the constant attacks and pressures and difficulty because it's, it's what we have chosen. I want, if you choose that you want the best of both worlds, to live as a Christian and still enjoy the sinful life, then you're going to be in trouble because you cannot serve two masters. Praise God. So we have to make a decision to serve the true and living God because he will not share his glory with another. So when we look at it, you know, they would have been, they chose the land that they needed, but they would find themselves under these constant attacks and pressures, and they will always be under threat. They sought this land through covetousness, through their own will. And so whatever the implications and the outcome, they would have to endure it. And we tonight must ensure that we pay attention to that, you know, as we seek for things. Let us choose to wait like the songwriter and say, I don't mind waiting on the Lord. Because as we wait, he's going to, you know, give us the desires of our hearts and he's going to give us the better, the best things because he desires to give us the best. Praise God. So Rev, over to you for your comments. Thanks, Bishop. Boy, it's really get, it gets interesting as we just look at... Um, the scriptures tonight and we realize that there are references to what took place in the past so that we can put everything together and even understand what god is doing so as you said bishop the this portion that was read tonight speak to the allotment of the rubenites the allotment given to the rubenites and we see as you mentioned that the tribe that the joseph's sons receive um the richest part of the land and i can't help but go back since this part is allotted to the rubenites to look at reuben and why as the firstborn he would not receive the the the, the, the best part of the land and he had to settle for 
being served first. You know, he was served first out of courtesy. He was the firstborn, but he would have bring, um, you know, this honor to his birthright when he made some missteps. First of all, when Joseph, the younger brother, was um, was um, went to see them, his his other brothers, including. Reuben, the firstborn, you know, he did not um, stand up and represent himself and his father and the other brothers as the eldest one, you know. He really didn't do anything to prevent the others from doing what they did to Joseph, if you remember the story in Genesis. And so he would have lost out on that as a result because when his father was... Uh, you know, handing down the the inheritance and you know speaking over their lives, the blessings. When he was speaking over their lives, he would have uh, you know said uh, you know mentioned his uh, disappointment with Ru um with Reuben. So Reuben, here we are seeing that God remembers you know the things that we do, and even though He shows mercy, but we cannot tell but see as evidence here that the consequence will follow us wherever we go and a lot of times we you know we cry out to god about some things that we have already done in the past and he showed us mercy and delivered us you know but we have to the, the that that thing that we did follow us through because the act is already done so it's a lesson to us to really you know live righteously in this present world so that we do not have that baggage to carry but we also see how god is faithful and merciful that they even have a part in the land and there is something else of note as well bishop that balaam you remember balaam his name is mentioned in verse 22 balaam also the son of beor the soothsayer did the children of Israel slay with the sword? Remember that Balaam was the one who hired, who was hired by Balak, you know, to curse the children of Israel. And God did not allow him to curse Israel. Right? So here we are seeing he was the one who was hoping that God would allow him to curse Israel for the Moabites, which was Balak. So he was mentioned here as one that israel conquered and they overcame yes and so god would have allowed the writer of this book to put it there to show that after a while that this man would not be able to live with the children of israel in the land even though israel did not know that he was doing all of that behind their back using soothsayer soothsaying you know trying to destroy them but god saw and god stopped it but here god allowed them to to take him out to destroy him along with uh, others as well yes over to you bishop thank you so much rev um i want to greet dr tamika stevens our sister who is online so grateful to have you and you know your comment amen shows that you're following through and listening to what God is saying to us tonight. Bless the Lord. So welcome and greetings to everyone. I'm sure there are others who have joined us, but you didn't come in, so I'm not able to say that you are there, but I'm grateful that you are. Praise God. We are now at verse 24 through 28. Two more segments to go, and I'm going to ask Sister Rochelle to read for us again, and then we have the last segment thereafter. Sister Rochelle. Repeat the verses 24, 24 28. through 28. And Moses gave inheritance unto the tribe of God, even unto the children of God, according to their families. And their coast was Jazar, and all the cities of Gilead, and half the land of the children of Ammon, unto Aror, that is before Reza. And from Heshbon unto Ramath, this day, and Bethlehem, and from Mahanim unto the border of Debir, and in the valley Betharam, and Beth Nimrod, and Sukkot, and Zaphon, the rest of the kingdom of Sion came 
and Heshbon, Jordan and his border, even unto the edge of the sea, up to the rest, on the other side of Jordan, eastward. This is the inheritance of the children of Dan, after their family, the city, and their villages. Thank you. Thank you to God. Thank you, Sister Rochelle, for reading for us again. Praise God. So this, this, this section, we realize it deals with the land given to the tribe of God. And similarly to the tribe of Reuben, they chose the land that they wanted to settle on for their inheritance. Every one of the tribe was, was um, catered to clan by clan. What an awesome God. He ensures that everyone is catered to. Do we want our own will or God's will? Jesus died so that God's will can be available to us. And so we must make use for it in our day-to-day -day life. Even in our own way, God proves faithful to ensure that we are not left out. So all of the God tribe would have been covered clan by clan. And, but as believers in Christ, we can reference our inheritance to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 4, which says to us, we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for us, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. So sometimes we would find that in our lifetime, we may not own any land, we may not own anything, and people will even look down on us. We have to move from place to place because each time we you know, get uncomfortable, we have to find somewhere else to go because we don't have something for ourselves. But I want to remind us that we should not, as Christians, we should not focus on these material things because it will cause us to lose the essence of the true inheritance that we have in Christ. As First Peter says, verse um, chapter, First Peter 1 verse 4 says, we have a priceless inheritance. This inheritance is kept in heaven. So no, no, no devil from hell have any place to touch our inheritance. And this inheritance is well kept for us in heaven. It is pure, undefiled, and it's beyond the reach of change and decay. So our inheritance cannot spoil. It doesn't matter how long the Lord takes to return for, the, for his world. We will, our inheritance will still remain intact, will still remain fresh and available for us. So let us trust God tonight. As believers, we should not seek to covet or to have our own way as it pertains to material things, because that's what the Reubenites and the people of God and the half man have said. It. They chose to have their own way and to be covetous. But let us seek after the inheritance of God, the inheritance um, that God wants us to share in, and let us not settle for less. Over to you, Rev. Um, yes, so true, Bishop. So true. And that is so poignant tonight to remember that in all that we possess on earth, our eternal inheritance is with our Father, Jesus Christ. And that's where our focus needs to be. God bless you. So, um, yes, in the, in, in the lot of the tribe of God, um, this was north of the Reuben, uh, north of Reuben's lot. And um, the country of Gilead lay in this tribe. Yes. Um, the, this Gilead was famous for its balm. That remember the scripture in Isaiah that says, is there no balm in Gilead? Gilead? Yes. Yes. So Gilead was famous for its balm. And so it was strange indeed that there could be no balm in, in Gilead. And the cities of Jabesh Gilead and Ramoth Gilead, which we often read of in scripture. So those belong to that, that those, uh, that those country, that country was in that tribe. Succoth and Penuel, which you read of in the story of Gideon, were in this tribe as well. And that forest, which is called the Wood of Ephraim, um, in which Absalom's rebellious <laughs> army was beaten while his father david lay at mananim one of the cities of this tribe sharon 
is also famous for roses was in this tribe as well and within the limits of the tri of this tribe lived those gatherings you remember the story um in the in the gospels where jesus delivered this man who was demon possessed he had you know many devils in him and he allowed the 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 demons to you know he um he re they requested that they be sent into the pigs into the swine so they went into the swine and they drowned off in the sea so the the gatherings they love their swines better than their savior and they were you know better called the gurgashite so this these um places were in this tribe god the god tribe as well just want to point it out point those out because in scripture we read a lot about the uh, about them so we can you know just uh, put into focus what um these uh, where these uh, um tribes and the 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 events took place and yes. so forth that's okay. it yes 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 profound rev and we we see you mentioned the girl the girl the girl shites the girl shites, the, right yes. those that's one of the tribe that the lord had commanded them to to, to chase out of the land you know so yes they allow that tribe to remain with them so they would continue to have challenges and be under the threat of the enemy and so this is it this is an example for us as as believers too you know there are some things that we condone some things that we you know we we nurse it we we we, we treat it as a part of us we we actually say we are we are waiting on god to remove it when we simply should just remove them out of our way because sure. God has already given us the power to do that. But we are sitting down praying and waiting on God to remove them for us. Um, and, and he has given us the authority to do it. So we need to look in ourselves and begin to do what we are called to do and be faithful in honoring you know, what God has called us to do rather than just saying we are waiting on God because he is waiting on us to do what he has already told us to do. Amen. Amen. So we're going to go to the last segment. Um, Sister Russia is going to read for us again. The last segment is verses 29 through 33. Bless the Lord. And Moses gave inheritance unto the tribe of Manasseh. And this was the possession of the half tribe of the children of Manasseh by their families. And their coast, from, and their coast was from Mahalim. All Basha, all the kingdom of Ar, king of Basha, and all the towns of Dario, which are in Basha, this great city, and half Gilead, and Ashtaroth, and Edia, cities of the kingdom of Ar in Basha, were pertaining unto the children of Machia, the son of Manasseh, even to the one half of the children of Basha, and their families. These are the countries which Moses did distribute for the inheritance in the plains of Moab on the other side of Jordan, by Jericho, Israel. But unto the tribe of Levi, Moses gave not all, gave not the inheritance. The Lord God of Israel was the inheritance, as he said unto them. The interpretation of the same thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you again, Sister Rochelle. So we are at the end of the study here, the last segment. And this is about the lands that were given to half tribe of Manasseh. The, 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 the tribe of Manasseh was divided in two halves. And this occurs when many people from the tribe wanted to settle east of the Jordan River in an area that was especially suitable for their flocks. As we see in Numbers 32, verse 33, the rest of the tribes of the tribe preferred to settle west of Jordan River in the land of Canaan. So this helps us to look at um, the whole business of the divine will and the permissive will of God, because God has an inheritance for us, and yet we want to choose where we want to settle instead of 
waiting on God for us to receive his permission and the permissive will that he has for us. They knew that this was not the promised land, but yet they chose to dwell there. They just look at it and think this is best for them. So in verse 33, the tribes of Levi was dedicated to serving God. The Levites needed more time and mobility than the landowner could possibly have. Giving them land would mean saddling them with responsibilities and loyalties that would hinder them from service to God. So instead, God arranged for the other tribes to meet the Levites with needs through donations. See in Numbers 35, verse 2 to 4, for how the Levites were, um, were to receive cities within their tribal territories. The Levites were not homeless. God assigned them cities throughout the land. And that is very, very profound. They didn't have to own anything. God would make provision. And God was faithful to them because they trusted in him. And this in, in and of itself is a lesson for us tonight that though we would think that we lack and we don't have enough, if we trust in God, he will favor us. He will make the way for us. He will provide for us. And then we don't have to be worrying about our daily meal because he would supply those needs according as his riches in glory. So we want to be like the Levites tonight because, you know, we some of us want to be like the Reuben and the God and we choose the best of the of the land and think that this is it. And we have everything. Our earthly possessions are rich and in good you know in good standing but where where is our faith where is our in our, our place in that inheritance that 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 priceless inheritance that god has for us we need to take stock ensure that we build our spiritual life ensure that we build that connection with god so that we can really inherit what he has in store for us and don't just glory in the material inheritance that we have achieved because these things will not last forever. In fact, when our time to leave earth, we cannot carry them with us. But we have a we have a, a priceless inheritance that is secured in heaven. And God wants us to work towards that. We can only achieve it if we remain faithful, if we remain obedient, if we really trust God and serve him faithfully like the Levites. He will really make ways for us, even where there seems to be no other way. Over to you, Rev, as you give your final comments and wrap up the study for tonight. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you, Bishop. Very well said. Really need to take our, our cue, you know, take our lessons from these characters. But I just want to point out in this portion of the scripture, Sister Rochelle read for us so ably, <laughs> even though um the names are an issue but we understand that she's doing so well with you know despite all of that verse 30 uh, mentioned og the king of bashan and we, you know if we're following we would remember that og the king of bashan was a mighty you know infamous king yes. amorite is a is a amorite he was in the days of moses and he fought against the israelites on their way to the promised land you know he, he fought against god's people and god granted the israelites the victory over og and his forces and moses and the israelites possessed bashan so we see here that god was faithful in helping israel to conquer this great and mighty king with all of the forces that he had and then they lived in that land yes. of Bashan, that fruitful land east of the jordan river and the victory was very significant because of the, the, the you know the strength of this king and he was a very fearsome man people feared him and when we realize the inexperience of the israelite we realize that God was really fighting with them. Le leading up to that, leading up to that, we also have the, another king is mentioned, the, the king of Sion. Sion or Zion, S-I-H-O-N. And he was um, king of Bashan. 
as well, an Amorite king. And Moses had requested of him <laughs> that to allow the Israelites to pass through his land. And they promised not to take any of the Amorites resources along the way. But they just needed permission to go through his land. But he did not. Instead, he attacked them. <laughs> And God would uh, help them to, you know, get the victory over him. So when I read the Psalms, we will see these two kings being mentioned because it was very, very important to Israel. Um, Og, the king of Bashan, and Zion, the king of Bashan, they were great kings and they were very fortified in, you know, what they could do on their fence of cities. But yet, inexperienced Israel with the force and the strength of God overcame these men. So the next time you're reading the Psalms, pay attention and look at what the Psalmist is saying there. And as, I, as we close off tonight, I just want to say to us as a people and as a church that we have to be always mindful that God takes stock of everything that we do. He has created us. He has created us for a purpose. And he is going to ensure that we carry forward the purpose for which he has created us. If we rebel, like we see that in, in, the, in the sto um, stories that we are reading so far, whenever Israel move away from God's, uh, move out from under his, uh, his sovereignty, they failed. So we need to ensure that as we mature, as we grow up in him, that we draw even more closer and try to understand him and, and stay in his presence where he can reveal himself to us. We, we need to understand as well, as God had said to Joshua, that his years were, were getting closer to the time when he would no longer be on earth. We have to be mindful that we live our lives as a tale, a story that is told. And that is found in Psalm 90, that yes. God knows our allotted time and that he is uh, looking on to see what we are doing with that time. We must be good stewards of our time. And we should be mindful that everything that God has given to us, we should cherish it and um, appreciate it, share it. Um, we, should be, we should exercise equity in our distribution of what we have, especially, you know, myself as leader, you know, and all leaders. And we should ensure that we do not grieve the people, but we give unto them according as God would have said to us, you know, have requested of us. And we are to ensure that whatever we do, we leave something for somebody, give something. We see in this chapter that God is a God who gives. He gives gifts and he makes sure that people were receiving according as he, you know, he would in his estimation be what they are um what they what they should receive you know and so uh we should make sure that when we receive something that we honor it and inheritance is very important make sure that we are leaving something for our children for our parents uh, make sure that whatever inheritance we receive that we enjoy it, not only enjoy it, but that we appreciate it and not allow it to be um, destroyed in any way, you know, as long as it is in our will to do. So we should make sure that we are taking care of what we receive. God bless you tonight and the Lord strengthen us as we continue to look at the the book, the book of Joshua, look at all the lessons we can learn and try to avoid all the mistakes. And that is how we are going to move on to enjoy our spiritual inheritance, which is already laid up in heaven for us. God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much, Reverend French, for encapsulating the entire chapter and just bringing us into context and into focus. We are really, really empowered tonight. So many lessons we have learned, and I wish we will continue to build on what we have learned tonight and be better stewards as the Lord has called us to be. We are now at the time for prayer. Reverend French will be closing off in prayer. If there's any prayer requests, I wanted to send them in to us quickly, and I'm sure Reverend French will pray 
with you and for you. Yes, Brother Howard is saying powerful words. So grateful that you are blessed and can share that word of commendation. Praise God. And Sister Hyacinth is saying, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And others have expressed hallelujah and amen along the way. We give God thanks for just about everyone who has joined us tonight. And we are looking to God for, you know, that, that, that blessings that he has in store for us as we share in his word. We're just going to wait a little more for, you know, so, um, any prayer requests. And then um, Reverend French will close off for us in prayer momentarily. the lord bless the lord so far we have only had we have had two prayer requests coming in one from minister adams asking for prayer and also brother Howard wright asking for um our continual prayer bless the lord he is someone who believes in prayer and so he continues to ask that we continue to pray with him and for him so rev over to you as you bring these requests to the lord and as we celebrate tomorrow you know our independence we want to just bring our people to god and even now begin to give god thanks for this rich heritage that we have and you know the legacy that we have as a country jamaica and even what we have in in god you know this inheritance that we have in god we give him thanks tonight so over to you rev as you close off in prayer thank you bishop praise god hallelujah lord hallelujah father we praise you god Yes. Oh God, we exalt you. We lift you up. Ah, oh, Father, we honor you tonight as uh, the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, the bright morning star. You are great, and there is none like you. You are powerful. You are you are El Shaddai. Oh God, you are the great and mighty God. We thank you, Lord, that you remember us, Lord. You remember us in our lowest state. You remember us when we are happy. You remember us when we are joyful. You remember us when we are sad. Lord, you remember us because we are your children. We thank you for being with us tonight. Oh, God, for your very presence that we felt among us. We thank you for those who have joined. We thank you, Lord, for the work that you are doing in all of our hearts as we come before your word and to study your word, to know more about you, Lord God. We cannot know you, Father, unless we come before you, God. 
into your word. Oh God, this is one way that we know more about you and draw strength from you, Lord God. So we thank you tonight that you were right here. We, we realize that we cannot know, know much if you don't reveal it to us. So Lord, we thank you for the revelation that we are receiving, my God, from your words tonight. Thank you, Daddy that you remember us oh mighty god and so lord i thank you for this opportunity to share your word thank you for bishop williams mighty god thank you lord for all the giftings that you have placed in him oh god and the opportunities lord that we are we are received even in coming on this platform to evangelize to to cause others to come to know you and to even share in the study and to present their needs to you we thank you lord god we thank you for sister rochelle who read for us tonight lord as a young person we thank you god that you save her you brought her to yourself and we pray god that you will continue to uplift her with your righteous right hand that god you will strengthen her and that she makes herself available to be used by you like the levites lord oh god you will bless her abundantly mighty god spiritually and in all other ways that she may be desirous of your blessings yes. oh my god tonight i present all those who listened on oh god and i pray even if they did not even as they have not really typed oh god a request but you know what your children need tonight so i pray as they draw near to you father father that you who gives good gifts to your children will grant unto them their desires bless them abundantly open up their understanding reveal yourself to them lord moment by moment help them to understand you father and your word lord god because there's so much to know of you and to learn from you so that we can be better equipped and ready to to get into our spiritual canaan lord i pray for brother Howard wright as he faithfully come to the bible study mighty god lord i pray that you will continue to lay your hand upon your servant lord god whatever he is in need of according to your will let it be done tonight Father, I pray that his spiritual life will take on a new horizon. Lord God, I pray that as he feasts at your table, that he will be fat and flourishing in your word and he will go out, mighty God, and present you to others. Oh God, I pray that you will bless him. Oh God, in a temporal way, Father, bless him on the job. Bless him, oh God, in his family life and in all his social settings. Lord, I pray blessing upon the man of God. And so, Lord, I pray for Minister Adams as well, that, Lord, even as she too, like Joshua, may be coming towards that time, oh God, of old age, that you will strengthen her, Father. You know about the weakness in the bones, Lord. You know about, oh God, the, the healing that she so desires. But we have learned tonight that the, the, the tribe of God, Lord, they lived in the land where the, the, the balm was present. And we know you tonight to be the balm in Gilead. So I pray tonight, Lord, that you will heal her. Let your healing hands overflow upon your daughter tonight. Healing is a children's bread. Minister Adams, receive healing in the name of Jesus. I declare healing over her body tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. And whatever other needs that she may have, whatever other requests, Lord, you know how to do it. For we hear in your words tonight that you know everything. You know all things, God. And you have, oh God, your own idea about what you want to do in us. And we know that one of your ideas is that your children are well and keeping well. Because you, are, you died for that. Jesus Christ died for our healing. So heal her, Lord, and bless her in other ways, and bless all your children who have gathered tonight. Father, I pray even 
for our nation, Jamaica, as we celebrate another independence. Lord, I thank you that you gave us this land. Truly, Father, your word says that, in uh, Lord, you know our habitation. You know where we would live, mighty God. And so that we would feel after you, Lord God, you have called us into families lord god in this nation you know where each of us abode you know father oh god where you would have placed jamaica mighty god even when it was discovered you would have already oh god our day in this place we thank you for the green isles of jamaica we thank you for the land of wood and water we thank you almighty oh god that you father have, have ordained this land to be uh god rich with so much legacy great men who have fought my god for our redemption mighty god in the flesh and we know father that you are doing a redemptive work mighty god and we thank you for that uh, lord there are so many things that we are not uh, so keen on lord we are not comfortable mighty god with how we 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 are using or misusing our inheritance lord we are not we are concerned that we are not comfortable comfortable oh god but i pray tonight lord that jamaica oh will come back from where we are come back from idolatry come back oh god from the place of where we give a worship to other things and forget you come back from backsliding mighty god i pray that tonight jamaica will we will call our walls salvation and our gates praise lord you have blessed us with so many good things my god we we have athletes lord Lord, oh God, who continue to be a wonder to the world. Mighty God, you have given us, oh God, the natural things in the earth. Mighty God, so many people want to, to be like us in our in our language, you know, in our culture, in our food. Lord, many come to us for our food. Truly, Lord, we thank you, Father, for our our our, our waters. My God, so many enjoy it, Lord, the natural elements that you have given us. But yet as a people, we, some of us are not appreciative. Father, I pray tonight that you will help us, Lord, to receive our inheritance with gratitude and to love you and to trust you and praise you, Father, to show our gratitude through the way we live with each other. Lord, I pray against the murder, oh God, the rape of all women, the killing of each other. Oh God, I pray against the abuse of children. Lord, in every way that our children are being abused, mighty God, I pray against them. every wickedness of men, every soothsayer. Lord Jesus, because as we read in your word tonight, uh, that if we continue, oh God, to, to consume salt mediums and other uh gods then lord we will be destroyed as a nation father you have been so merciful to us over the over the Thank years you, god so we escape so many natural disasters because lord some of us are praying oh god i pray that you will continue to show us mercy lord and father those who are so far off from you will come and know you as savior bless our land eternal father bless our land oh god guard us and guide us keep us free from evil powers be our light through countless hours father we depend on you we thank you that even our anthem is a prayer father i pray that as more people pray it and say it lord that more sons will be born unto you we thank you for tonight we thank you for all things that you are doing in our lives in our churches oh god i pray that the church will be the salt and the light to be your true witness in this earth so that more people will come and know jesus christ bless us god and continue to to prosper us and bless our bible study oh god we lift up bishop williams and the, the model family to you again uh, we thank you lord oh god that you will continue to pour into us as we continue to be faithful to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Rev. No one to him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his great eye throne with exceeding joy. To the only wise God be now dominion, majesty, and power until he comes. Let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Thank Praise you so much Lord. for tuning in. And thank you, Rev, for sharing, making the work lighter. 
And <laughs> You're we look, welcome. We look forward to another week to come next week. Oh, Amen. Yes. Amen. Bless the Lord. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Bless you.